chores. All right. things. She sure would have bawled me out. Listen, son, don't you let that art teacher put anything over on you. I sure don't. I put over on her. Freddy, you want to go up the road with me a piece? Where are you going? Kind of looks like it's going to shower and I want to cover that new corn that there's still. Well, gee, I was going to go after Jenny. All right. Go on. All right, Dad. <laughs> to get in there with that old sow. But, Daddy, the little pig was stuck in the mud and, and he was drowning. Next time you call me. Get to the barrel and wash yourself. Wait a minute, Jenny. I'm, I'm funny. Well, no, but you did look kind of silly in there with all those pigs. Anyway, you ought to know better. You can't drown a pig in mud. Well, maybe you can't. But Daddy says that in this country, the pig was a gentleman that pays the rent. And I wasn't going to take any chances. Hey, wait a minute. Anyway, my dad says that teacher don't know how to spell. Why, Freddie Nolte. My teacher knows all the words in all the books and all the words. Aw. Uh, I don't care what your dad says. My teacher says you have to learn how to spell. <laughs> It looks 
go for help. Hurry. Hurry. Yes, Betty. Daddy. Daddy. You all right? Daddy. Speak to me. Why are you going this morning, Ira? I'm aiming to go up to the stairs. through his shoulder. Oh. It's going to be all right, Mike. It's going to be all right. Oh, Freddie. <laughs> Freddie, he's not bad hurt. We'll take care of him. Now, you and Ginny go on to school, dear. I guess I was hit. You're going to be all right. I reckon so. Mike, tell me who shot you. And I'll follow him to his grave. No, Ira. It's my fight. I'll take care of that skunk when I'm up in the boat. Oh. Mike, we gotta get him home. Oh, easy. Please. Please, easy. Frederick Nelty, please come here. What excuse have you both for being late? My old man got hurt. Ginny here had to go for help. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Frederick. Was it serious? No, I think he'll be all right. He should have a doctor, teacher. There's no doctor in his community now. Later, perhaps. Go on back to your seat. did you do that? Teacher, it was a pigeon, and he dropped it on my book. <laughs> Quiet. Alex, you come up here. Vanta, Lila, Bill, bring a spelling lesson. Vanta, you spell the word butter. Butter. B-U-T-T-E-R. Correct. Lila, the word banish. B I N H. That was a very good try, Leela. You try it, Bill. Banish. B A N D H I S H. You'd better take your book home with you tonight. Alex, you try it. Banish. B A N I S H. Correct. Now go back to your seat. All right, uh, Jenny Colton, Frederick Naughty, Jeanette, and Tom. All right, Tom, spell the word catalog. C-A-T-A-L-O-Q-E. You didn't study your lesson, did you? No. Jeanette, the word mountain. M-O... M-O-T-I-A-N. You better study your lesson more thoroughly next time. Jenny, the word automobile. A-U-T-O-M-O-B-I-L-E. Correct. Freddie, the word milking. M-I-L-K-G-I-N-G. 
Freddie, you didn't study your spelling lesson last night, did you? I tried to make him, Miss Carol, but he wouldn't. See that you study it tonight, young man. Teacher. All right, George. Teacher, teacher. All right, Cecil. So take out your arithmetic books. Hey, Cecil. This one's Ma. This is Pa. Are you really glad to see me? Why didn't you tell me you were coming? I just couldn't stay another minute down there in the city with you up here in this godforsaken country. You know why I stay here. But you promised that when I became established in my profession, you'd marry me. Yes, I know. Well, now I'm assistant district attorney. You, you can't stall me this time. Oh, I am proud of you, Charles. But I haven't accomplished what I set out to do. Now you're wasting your time. No, dear, I'm not. Yes, you are. Right. Now look here, Eileen. You can't change the customs of these people. Others before you have tried. But I was born here. They're my people. My blood. But you've been out in the world. You've gone to school. Yes, I was fortunate in taking an education. Now it's my duty to help them. Uh, all the education in the world wouldn't help them. You could help me, if you really love me. Well, of course I love you, but what could I do? You can do a lot, dearest. What, for instance? Just continue to love me and be patient. Patient? <laughs> I've been waiting patiently for the last five years. I suppose you want me to wait until I'm an old man. Charles, I'm going to fight for these people until a state realizes that child marriage must be stopped. Sometimes I wonder if you, if you really do love me, Eileen. The purest blood in our land flows in the veins of these mountain people, and yet the government does less for them than for any group within its boundaries. Government neglect is one cause. And as governor of this state, I beg of you to realize that this child marriage law will be a wedge to free these mountain people from adverse social and economic conditions. How do you do, Thomas? There goes that Miss Carol. Baby, how's the baby? Pretty good, Miss Carol. We're missing you at school. Well, my husband says there's nothing finer than a bunch of young'uns. But, Sadie, don't you realize that at 25, you'll be an old woman? If that school mom don't quit preaching our women, folks, she's fixing to get herself into a mess of trouble. I thought perhaps all the women of the village could get together and... We don't go meddling in no foreigners' business. Why should you in ours? I'm not a foreigner. I'm as much a mountain person as any of you. And I'm fighting for the improvement of this community. Now listen, Mrs. Haggerty. Your mother, you have seven children of your own. <laughs> you can jump from childhood into womanhood by saying, I do. We got to marry him young. We're short of women. Well, isn't it better to have a woman for 30 years than a child for 15? <laughs> what I'm trying to make you understand is that you can't fight nature's law. Bearing children is a woman's job. Child marriage must go. Your Excellency, this law must pass. Oh, I beg Your Excellency to endorse Miss Carroll's bill. Hey, Happy! Come on, 
right down. All right, Angelo. Hey, you. Did you get that corn up to the Higgins? Yeah. Well, where's the money? I'm giving the money to Ira. Well, Ira's my partner. It's as much mine as it is his. Isn't? I'm still giving the money to Ira. Don't give me any of your lip. Come on, come on, give me that money. I won't do it. Why, are you... Hey, leave him alone. Leave him alone, I tell you. Why, you poor simp. Now, now. now then, I'll have that money. I want to. Now then, I'm going to give you the same dose. Oh, so, Jake, don't. Jake, put him down. Who do you think you're talking to? You, you slimy weasel. How many times must I tell you to leave him be? So, you want to play? I've been waiting a long time for this chance. And now I'm a cow, you dirty skunk! All right, Ira. This time I lose. But there'll be a next time. I ain't gonna say no. Next time. Uh -huh. Fill up four gallons of corn liquor and take it over to Coop's farm. I'm going to kill you. I wonder what could have happened to Jake. He should have been here by now. Maybe he's down to school, Marms, seeing whether she's out preaching against us marrying young'uns. Gosh darn her education anyway. Why don't she mind her own business? I'm for driving her out of town. Yeah. Darn feathers rescue business. Oh, you're getting yellow, Clump. I'd put her in boiling oil and watch her fry if weren't she one of our kind. Why, she's the cause of me losing that kid, Nellie Jensen. Jake, your face looks like it's gone through a thrash machine. What happened? Oh, I had a run-in with a bunch of hijackers from the Corn Valley. A little bit too much for me, that's all. Is everybody here now? We're all here. Good. What do we do now? You, Ezra. Lem, Jeremiah, and Clump. Go down through Bone Valley and meet us at the bear cave near the tunnel tree. Take your masks along and be sure and bring those torches along, too. All right, Jake. Be careful now. Okay, where's my mask? Oh, there it is. Put out this fire. All right, let's go.
Colby. You'll pay for this. I know who you are. Come on. Come on. with torches. I left Happy to trail him, and he's to meet us at Devil's Rock. We'll take the shortcut through Devil's Ground. to meddle with our customs and to stick to your own ABCs. I teach what is right. We have our own ideas about what's right and what's wrong in this section. How dare you bring me here? I'll have a law upon you. The law? <laughs> We're the law in these here mountains. And I'll show you. Come on with it, Tom. Let's get this business over. Take your dirty hands off, Miss Carroll, or I'll pluck all of you. Get down the tree and help Miss Carroll. Yes, sir. Yes. Step out and line up against the light. Think you can shoot straight? You try me. I'm just itching to plug one guy I think's down there. Make a false move, and I'll let you have it. And take this gun. I've still got you covered. And I'm a common. If it ain't cop turned scout and Jeremiah, Lum, my friend. And Jake, 
My partner. No, listen, I... The school mom had it coming to her. I thought I gave you enough the last time. I'll finish it now. Jake, did Colton pay you for the interest in that still? He sent me $40. Just what I put in. But you never can tell. Maybe later when I get settled, I can get even. I hear the school, ma'am, is still staying. Never scared her one bit. Yeah, I hear she's preaching stronger than before. Well, when we're on the prowl again, I'll make certain. Crow, I know what you're aiming at. Oh, uh, hush your fuss.
up. All right. Come on, Freddie. 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 Come on, There comes Colton, stiffy-eyed again. You'd be all liquored up, too, if your wife was fooling around with your partner. Nah, Jake ain't fooling around with Colton's wife no more. He said he's trapped for that young'un. Get him to bed. 
All right, Mummy. Him at last. I knew you'd do it sooner or later. And it sure looks like a good job. No. No, Jay. I didn't do it. I believe my own eyes, Flora. I saw you do it. I only scratched your side, I thought. No, Jay. God is my witness. I didn't do it. Listen, Cora, we ain't got no time to lose. Before anyone gets wind of this, I'd like to help you. Oh, Ira. Oh, Daddy, tell Jason, Mommy, Dennis. Hold on, Cora, this needs a rope for you. You're lying, Flora. You're lying, and you know it. But what's this squabbling? We both know that he had it coming to him. No, he didn't. We ain't got no more time to lose, don't you understand? Jenny. Jenny. Oh. You step outside and see that no one's watching you when I bring your pappy out. Well? What you stand there gaping for? You want your Mary to hang? Go on, go on, get outside. Go on. James, what are you going to do? Taking him to Spooky Hollow. I'll make it look like he fell over a cliff, and the knife went into him that way.
Oh, come on, Jess. It's only a wolf on a prowl after the rain. That's no wolf. It's a dog. I bet you somebody's croaked. Keep the best of flora now that Ira's gone. Who killed him? I got my suspicions. Jimmy, poor kid. And these last rites are for one Ira Colton, a steam member of our community, killed by unknown hands. We of the Colton's clan are not worried about his soul going to heaven. But woe unto the guilty one whose hands are stained with Ira's blood. And as God said to Noah, For whosoever sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. Amen. decided to take myself a wife. Why do you come to me? Oh, don't get scared. I don't want you. I want to talk to you, though, about her. You mean Ginny? That's right. What's the matter, Ginny? Your face is all puckered up. Oh, uh, nothing. That's Jake Bowlby's in the cabin with Mother. And I shouldn't leave her alone with him. Oh, come on. He won't bite her. We'll take a short swim and come right back. All right. All right. That's the way it's going to be, then, because you're going to hang. And you look pretty with a rope around your neck. No, I don't. Why, are you blaming me for killing Ira? Jade is going to get my Ginny. James! Yeah? Well, I'll testify that I saw you kill Ira. You lie. You know it. And everybody else will know it. Yeah, but they'll believe Lum and Ezra and Jeremiah. I'm going to the county seat tomorrow. And that'll give you plenty of time to make up your mind. And remember, it won't take the marshal long. Yeah, I'm going to 
Howdy, boys. Howdy, Howdy, Howdy. Howdy. Well, how's it feel to courting the prettiest young in the community? I don't see how you do it. I thought you and the Coltons were on the out. Not at all. Troy thinks that I'll make Jenny a right good husband. Well, Jake, you'd better be a hurrying, because the school mom has a fun sweetheart fighting to pass a marriage law at the state capitol. Yeah, and if it does, you'll be courting Jenny for seven long years. Yeah, I'll take care of that. Look what I brought you. Now listen, Jenny. I'm going to be your husband. You may want to be nice to me because if you don't, you know what will happen to your ma. I, I'll try. Oh, and there's just one more thing. I don't want you to be seeing this pretty nutty no more. Do you understand? Yes. All right. Now take this. Go on, go on, take it. that Jake told me if he catches me seeing you or speaking to you, he'll wring my neck. Yes, I know, but, but, Freddy, I must marry him or my mummy will suffer. Well, why should your mother suffer? Oh, Freddy, don't ask me that. I can't tell you. Well, all right. You don't want to tell me. But... Ain't you going to come to school no more? No. They won't let me. Oh, pretty. Don't cry, Jenny. Miss Cal. Yes? What brings you here? I... I came to tell you that Jake is going to marry my Jenny. And I thought you could stop it. Yes. I heard about it. I went to see Mrs. Colton. But she's already given her consent. Well, gee, couldn't you do nothing? I couldn't make her change her mind. I'm sorry, Freddie. There's nothing else I can do. If I was a little bigger, I'd kill him. Freddie! You mustn't say that. Perhaps we may still be able to stop this child marriage. Well, I thought you could do it. If there is anyone here among you who knows of any reason why these two people should not be joined together in holy wedlock. 
Let him speak now or forever hold his peace. Do you, Jake Bolby, take this, this girl child that you hold by the hand to be your lawful wedded wife, to love, honor, and cherish the rest of your life? Repeat after me. I do. I do. And you, Jenny Colton, do you take this man that you hold by the hand to be your lawful wedded husband, to love, honor, and obey for the rest of your days. I do. And now, I pronounce you man and wife. You may kiss the bride. Right there. All right. It puzzles me, Mr. Baird, why you have to post these notices at night. Well, I'll tell you, Marshal, um, I want to surprise the girl I'm engaged to. <laughs> you know, I kind of thought there was a nigga in the wood pile around here somewhere. <laughs> Give me one of those placards and that hammer. I'll show you yes, how it's done. Sir. Here's a nail. Fine. You wait here. Oh, all right. It's me, Charles. Charles! Darling. Darling, I put it over. Look, the law. Wait. When did the law pass? Three days ago, dear. Three days ago? Darling. Bye, Jeremiah. Okay, Jake. Thank you. I, I will be happy. Well, I will, I guess. Love you. Thank you. Laura, I'll be taking my wife home now. Oh, Mommy, I don't want to go. Jenny, you're my wife now, and it's time to go home. It's getting late. Oh, mommy. Just starting. Darling, what do you mean? Well, I can't be a child bride, but... But what? Up 
in the bed and I'll blow the lamp out. Can I say my prayers? Oh, all right, but make them short. And dear God, take good care of my mummy and my daddy in heaven. Amen. Later, you can be mine. <laughs> 